به ومن ولا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا انك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم اني اعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي يا ربي امين هاوز ايفري وان دوينج ذس مورنينج الحمد لله رب العالمين already so um this is going to be an issue because i don't think we can there's a lot of people online may allah forgive me and uh, i don't know how we will do this we need the slides for sure alhamdulillah let's just do a lot of salah on rasul alayhi salatu wassalam allah will fix it this is a hadith of rasul alayhi salatu wassalam when he uh, don't remember the name of the sahabi when he came to him and says how much of my dua I make it for you, meaning my salah. Then he said one third, one fourth, half, and he said all of it. He said, "Tukfa hamak, you will be uh, saved from your all your worries." So alhamdulillah, Okay, so what we're going to cover today. The reason I chose this for more than one reason. Number one is this is something very much relevant to us women. Number two, there is a lot of issues related to especially these days. How many of you know um, Roe versus Wade? That's sad. You live in California. You all need to know this. If you don't know what your children all knows about, this is the talk of the town, as they call it. Everyone in this country is talking about Roe versus Wade. This is 1971 or 72, where the abortion became legal in this country because the Supreme Court at that time made it legal based on this case. Now this, the Supreme Court is actually changing it. Well, they are not yet, but there is. there was a leak very recent. You all need to be up to date. You will not be able to talk to your children, your daughters, especially teenagers, those who are in college, if you don't know all these. They will not listen to you. You don't live in your life. You live in the la la land, as we say. This is, everyone is talking about it. So there was a leak maybe three weeks ago, two weeks ago, from the Supreme Court document that this may be turned over. And there is a huge awe about it. Because that will make, not for us, but we live in this country, that will make um, abortion illegal. And the first question I asked, I was asked in the hospital, any Muslim will get this question, what does Islam say about it? And I need to know the answer. I'm a Muslim woman. I'm an educated woman. I know my deen. I have to know this. And if I don't know, this is the time where I go and study and learn about it. And there is beautiful articles. I was looking yesterday, so I, I know I'll get the question, what do I study? Where do I look? And there was very good articles in many places. You can read in Arabic and in English. It's a beautiful book. Also was written about it a long time ago. So. That made me choose this subject. But before I'm going to go, the abortion is going to come at the end of it. I need you all. This is, is going to be a combination of deen and dunya. It's going to be a combination of Islam and uh, science. And this is what all our deen is all about, is you live them both. Remember when we talked about dunya three weeks ago? We said, this dunya is my farm for my akhirah. So if I'm clueless here, I'm clueless there. If I'm clueless in who is Allah and what does my deen tell me, or what should I know about my akhirah, then I am lost. So we don't want this. So the first thing I'm going to share with you is this. And this is extremely important. Who can read this? Anybody who read Arabic? Yes. I can't hear you. قُلْ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي Okay, so yes, this is very nice, especially when you go and visit. Uh, is that the one? No, I guess this is the one. Yep, alhamdulillah. Uh, when you go and visit Masajid, especially if you go to Turkey, it's like a, a, a quizzes. Because all this calligraphy, and you stand in front of it, it's like, what is this? And usually there is one or two letters will give you the clue. So this one is the scene here in the yard. Right? So, and then the next one. They ask you about the soul. They came to Rasulullah Wasallam. They keep asking me questions because they see, they, it's a challenging question. 
And the Rasulullah Wasallam, of course, is not like you and me. Jump to answers. I have no idea. There is nothing wrong when someone asks you to say, I don't know. In fact, it's a sign of strength. Because you are okay to tell people, I don't know everything, because nobody knows. But when I try to make sure that I know everything, then you are arrogant, what we, what we talked about last time, and what we're going to be talking about this coming Tuesday. You were not given from knowledge, but little, just a little bit, subhanAllah. And then here you go. And this applies to this creation. How much we know about creation? The details of it. It's literally like two layers of knowledge now, and there is this huge ocean full of unknown. And not only about a human being. How many of you look at animals and say, not only subhanallah, which we all do in that hum, but how they were created? Look at this. And look at this. This is the galaxy. This is the moon or the earth from the universe, or this is the moon as we see it. Look at this. How did that happen? You live in, again, in a, in a state full of beautiful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have the mountain, you have the sea, you have the ocean, you have the rivers, you have everything. And you have different color of mountains. How did this become fixed? And then on the day of judgment, what's going to happen? They ask you about mountains, Allah will destroy it completely. And what about the earth? It's rounded, but it's flat. How is that? How is that? That's how we get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is but just reflect around you and think of it. This is all in Surah al -Ghashir. And what about us? How we were created? What about this? Subhanallah, look at that. Look at this beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How was this all done? How? And look at that. There's no sound here. No sound? Ah, This is a beautiful verse in Surah Az-Zumar. I need you to try because I have a lot of Quran. Allahu khaliqu kulli shay. Allah is the creator of everything and he is capable of everything. Allah, everyone young and old, listening to me and seeing me, if you live with this verse by itself, I'm going to share a lot of verses with you. Unfortunately, I don't know why we don't have a sound. But if you look at this by itself, I don't know how people can't believe and I don't know how people can't obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the pictures I just showed. Everything. Everything. What's wrong with us? SubhanAllah. I, again, this is all videos. Read it at least. It's, there's a recital. Do you see? You created it. Where is the answer? Where is the answer? You all read this. This is a sort of walker. Nahma Adarna, Baina Kumil Mount, or Manahna Limas Bukhi, Nobadi Lamtalako. How many people died and new people came in their places? And we will create you back again. You don't know. And you knew the first one. This is Surah al Ah, that's the question. Why don't you remember? There's no answer, by the way. Surah al Waqia has all these questions and there's no answer. How you were created. Why don't you remember? Why don't you reflect? Right? This is how we are created. Right? What is that? 
a Muslim, beautiful Muslim woman, and a Muslim man, both. We need these two. Whatever people say, whatever they claim, they cannot do it without this. Regardless of whatever orientation, still you need these two, because that's the sunnah of Allah. SubhanAllah, it's so sad that all these videos are not, because unless you hear the Qur'an, and I don't know why we are not hearing it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this in Surah Al-A'raf. And I'm going to stop because I want you... This is the only verse in the Qur'an talking about marital relationship. Read it. فَلَمَّا تَغَشَّاهَا حَمَلَتْ حَمْلًا خَفِيفًا فَمَرَّتْ بِهِ When they have sexual relationship. فَلَمَّا أَثْقَلَتْ When she became pregnant and heavy. دَعَوَ اللَّهَ رَبَّهُمَا They both prayed to Allah. If you give us that righteous one, we will be from the grateful. Read it again. He created you from one. One. And who is that one? Adam. And then? Tabaraka. This is also another one. Who al-hayy? La ilaha illahu. Fad'uhu mukhlasin ilahu al-deen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. This is an offer. Allah also talked about the creation. You want your iman to get strong? Young and old, this has nothing to do with age. Just reflect on the creation. If you are like me in the medical field or in the science, reflect on the creation of the human beings. If you are in engineering or you are in geology or you're in IT, if you are in IT, which again, this is an IT state, look in the IT, just look at the computer. But we became so what? Numb. I say this to my numb. Of course the car works. Of course this works. Well, he, he just showed us it doesn't work. Subhanallah. So reflect on this and look at this. Tabarakallahu ahsanu al-khaliqin. Blessed is Allah, the best of create, the best who, to, who create, or the best to create. He said it twice. Ahsanu al-khaliqin, or Rabbu al The Lord. If I look at this and I see, you know, I'm, in my profession, Always I say this to the woman when I do ultrasound, especially the first ultrasound, when there is, you only start seeing the fetal heart. Those of you who've been pregnant and you've seen it, this is one of the most moving moments. There's three moments in pregnancy where you see the tears of the woman, the tears of joy. The first one is when she found out she's pregnant. Actually, there's four if I account this one. So the first one when she finds out she's pregnant. So she do the pregnancy test at home. You've seen all this. Second one is when she came to the office and I show her the fetal heart. The third one is when she heard the fetal heart, like in 20 weeks when we put the doctor and when the baby comes out. Never ever in my whole career, don't ask me how many I've delivered, lost count long time ago, I have not seen a woman cry when the baby comes out. It is amazing because, and I always say, how can people don't believe in Allah? Where did this come from? SubhanAllah. And look at that. Where did this come from? Right? Subhanallah. Basically, this is it. This is the man anatomy. So basically, this is the Dahaya of the Deen. The Rasulullah uh, Sallallahu Sayyidah Aisha narrated that the woman of, of Ansar, right? Bashfulness that never prevented them from learning their Deen. And we are so different these days. We don't ask. We need to know. They teach this in fifth grade, by the way. In case you don't know, fifth grade, 10 years old. And how can we women don't know this? So this is the man and this is the sperms. We need this. Sperms is the mutfa, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it in the Quran. And this is us. The uterus, the woman has uterus. There's a fallopian tube. There is the ovary. And this is the vagina. And the baby will sit here. I'll show you more pictures. And this is the ovary sliced. Like when we do surgery and we remove part of the ovary, this is how it is. And this is the egg, you call it egg. And this is how it, it starts. So follicle, follicle, gets bigger. Here is what we call it ovulation. 
And if a sperm comes in, you get pregnant, otherwise ends, and we get the P. And this is the egg. This is real picture. This is not drawing. This is real picture. This is how the egg looks like. And look at what happens when there is an intercourse. Millions, not one or two or three, millions. Look at this. This is real pictures, by the way. This is millions of sperms. This is sperm, 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 sperm. All the sperms surround one egg, millions. And then as they are surrounding, they die, they die, they die, they die. And then some stays and only one can get in. Subhanallah, you know why? Uh -huh. Read it. Changes in egg protein prevents entry of other sperm. Once one gets in, like you know when you shut the door in the house, that's what the egg does. It sends a protein and it's, this becomes completely sealed. No other sperm can go inside. So we don't have million babies the woman carrying. SubhanAllah. And here exactly what happens. So here you go, this is the sperm, this is the wall of the egg comes in and that's who we are, all of us. All of us, this is who we are. You know how big is this? Give a guess. Give a number. Whatever, I can't hear it. One millimeter, much less, you can't see it. This is basically egg, the sperm went in, and it's called fertilized zygote, we call it in the um, embryology. Unfortunately, this is the nicest, um, let's see if I, it's unfortunate, but what can we do? Allah has a reason. This is basically the verse in Suratul Mu'minun. We created the human being from an extract of clay. Then we le left him or made him, placed him, sperm drop in a firm lodging in the uterus. Then, then, sperm drop clinging clot. The cling clot made it into a lump. And then this covered, made it to become bones. The bones are covered with muscles. This is the main miracle of the Quran. Then we changed it. I didn't want to go into detail of this because I'm planning to do another one about this in detail. This is who we are. Every time I read this, whether I read the verse or I see this or I'm studying it in, as a, in medicine, I say what Allah subhanahu wa said in Surah Abbas. Woe on human being. From what? From what he created it. Or I, Allah, created it. He was created from what? And that's what he said. Sperm, spoiled sperm, they call it, spoiled drop, halaqa. That's it. And look at us. We grew up and we become argumentative, and I am not convinced. And show me this. Yani, sometimes, you know what I say to myself? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us how merciful He is, not by reading the Quran, by actions, by us being so argumentative, disobedient. We don't do what He wants us to do focus on our dunya, and then he still give us or feed us or give us more or give us faith, waiting for us to go back to him. Tabarakallahu ahsan al Yani subhanallah. And this is, and this is in the book of anatomy, by the way. This is the most famous book of anatomy. So here you go. The two I showed you, the small one, the less one millimeter comes here, alaqa starts hanging in there. This is how it is, leech. And Allah called it alaqa. Alaqa in the Arabic language, in the English, is leech. Something that's clinging. And if there is no clinging, that's when you miscarry. When the woman miscarry. Same thing he is. This is the leech. SubhanAllah. Allah called the alaqa. This is anatomy. This is the leech. Then you come here, mudha. This is the verse I just shared with you. This is anatomy. This is a chewing gum. This is chewing gum. 
This is the anatomy, look exactly the same, because this is the bone, the back, the spine, the future spine. The same words Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used it. And this is what happens, it starts from here, here, then you go here, that's the, that's the mudra, now that's baby, the baby, that's fetus, 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 fetus. Now, 36 weeks, 40 weeks, and then you deliver. That's how the baby sits. Subhanallah. Oh, she's pregnant. Oh, she had a baby. Natural. As, as an alif nan we became so uh, accustomed to things. We don't, we don't look into it deep and we think of it. Of course, that's the baby. She's coming. Oh, and this is how it is. What a beauty. Who created this? Him, subhanah. Subhanallah. And then this is the verse which I really love, but I don't think, yeah, this is in Surah Al Kahf, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <laughs> his companion, talk to him. You are ungrateful to the one who created you from dust. And then from the drop, then he made you a man. This is in Surah Al Kahf. Every Friday we read it. That's what I and you need to say. It's my Lord. Who, who attended yesterday Jum'ah? Here. It was one of the best Jum'ah khutbah I have heard. That's a concept very few people speak about. That's what he's saying. That you collect your heart. Ismullah al jamah The one who collects your heart, collect your affairs on him. And that's what he was telling him. You know when I dis when I am ungrateful and I complain? When when I'm not focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So always try, and I, you've heard me many times saying this, we will not change unless we will come to that. We will not change. We will not find obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala easy. Um, the struggle inside us, which we all have this struggle, subhanAllah, who doesn't have this struggle? It becomes much easier when my affairs, my heart, my thought is all collected on him. Those of you who have studied or are studying with us, especially those online, with the year of knowledge, I always say this and I put my hand like this. I say my life and yours, and especially the young people, listen to me. I wish I was 13 and 14 when... Um, someone taught me this. My life probably would have been completely different. Is This is the circle. You know circle of life? You've all heard about it. So this is the circle. And this circle is me. And I'm going through this because this is my life. And I have to go. And at the end, I'm going to go back to him. This circle, this line, this line is, needs to be, goes through everything that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the question I always ask, should I do it, should I don't? Should I attend, should I not? Should I travel? Should I get married? Should I have child? Should I or go to this college? Everything, never say because I like it. And never say because I don't like it. That's not for Allah, and that's me. It always has to be, is it pleasing to him? If the answer is yes, and I like it, you're a lucky person. Allah, I'm doing what he loves on that. If I don't like it, that's the struggle. But I'm going to say, Ya Allah, is there another thing you like that's easier on me? But always make this, and then you will never get into kafart. Because all your focus will be on him throughout your day and night. And, and as I shared with you, I think last time or the time before, that Allah is not the one we stand for salah. We don't know what we have said. And this is unfortunately all of us, myself included. If Allah is who is he? Subhana. And the more you look and reflect on his creation, the more you see who is he. So let's come now to the first controversial issue. This is a miscarriage. That's probably around maybe 10, 12 weeks. Because you see, this is muhallaq. You need to know this word. Because that's very important in the bleeding that happens after miscarriage. Is it my menstruation or it is not? The question is always this. Is it muhallaq? Muhallaq mean? You look at this and you say, this is a human being? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, because there's a head. You see the eyes, it's probably even bigger. It's probably about 14 weeks. You see the arms, you see the fingers, and you see the umbilical cord. If you open, 
if this was a little bit op more open, I could tell you exactly because by 16 weeks, you can see if it's a boy or a girl. So this is miscarriage or this is an abortion. What is the difference? In medicine, the terminology, and I'm, I'm going to share it with you, because I need you to know this, especially if you travel abroad. If you travel abroad, the word is usually abortion, mean miscarriage. Yes, if you live in, you go to Europe, you go to the Middle East, that's why this country is, things are different, so you need to be aware. So when, if it is abortion meaning, this is exactly, termination of pregnancy, by removal, that means what we call it here, abortion, or expulsion of an embryo, that's miscarriage. Meaning the woman is pregnant, she lost the baby, in our daily terminology. Either she chose to expel it, to remove it, or it came out. That's the word abortion. In this country, the word abortion means the second part, uh, the first part. Meaning, the woman did not, the woman chose not to continue the pregnancy for reasons we're gonna come to it. But I needed to know this, and it's about 30 to 40% of the pregnancies end up with miscarriage. But I'm gonna use miscarriage when I mean spontaneous, and I'll use abortion when it means induced meaning the woman doesn't want the pregnancy. So 30 to 40%, 15% of the first time mom, they miscarry. They feel so bad and it's, it's, it's emotionally, it's painful. Absolutely, it's a loss. It's a loss, whether it's six weeks, whether it is 20 weeks, it's a loss. And I always tell the woman, if you don't cry, I am worried, because that's not normal. I mean, we lose, we lose something, we cry. How about this, especially if you have a lot of, you know, planning, hopes and everything. So here, when, when Steps are taken to end the pregnancy. In medicine, we call it induced abortion. That's very common in Europe. They don't call it abortion. They call it induced abortion, or TOP when I remember, it's termination of pregnancy. The unmodified word ab abortion usually mean induced. In this country, when you read, even when you come to medicine in my offices, if they, if they say miscarriage, that means she lost it. If they say abortion, that means it is. Uh, a choice. I put this slide for a reason. The first question is going to come to you all. What does Islam say about abortion? Who can answer me? Yes. I can't hear you louder. I can't hear you at all. So you may have to take your N95. <laughs> Let me just, there's a request from the online people, Keith. They just want to zoom it out. Uh -huh. For instance, abortion, I understood, was allowed. I'm sorry, say it again. If it's rape or if it's incest, uh, if the, the woman can obtain an abortion, according to Islam. So what is the answer? The answer? I, I put you a clue here. That's why I put the clue here. Okay, you need to be very careful how you answer this question because people doesn't know how much you know. You're a Muslim woman, you're practicing, they assume you know. And what you answer, it's gonna affect a lot of people. So please learn it. The first thing you say is this word. Life is very sacred in Islam. We are not this and we are not that. We are always ummah wasata. We are always in the middle. What does that mean? Look at this. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-An'am. At the end of Surah Al-An'am, they actually refer to this as similar to the Ten Commandments. Come on in, come. I will rehearse, tell you, what has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made prohibited for you? What's prohibition mean? Or what does haram mean? I need one person. What does haram mean? Noor, what's haram mean? Haram is haram. But what does it mean? Right? What does it mean? Anam? No. Punishable without tawbah. Punishable without tawbah. 20% right. Huh? Haram, we, this is the most common word we put it on our mouth. Right? 
the, the youth probably says, that's what I hear from mom. Haram, everything is haram, right? Or it's not everything is haram, by the way. What does it mean? One person, please, so everybody can hear. That's forbidden, true, that you translated it. What does it mean in Islam? So imagine me, I don't know anything. I'm sorry? Displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's a sin. What is haram? Last trial. If I do it, I am going to be punished. And how about if I don't do it? I'll be rewarded. Don't forget that part. Ah, now alhamdulillah. Already. So if I do it, I am going to be punished. So don't always look at the hard, haram, nar, everything. You know, No, there is balance. If I do it, I am going to be punished. If I am not, meaning I have the option, I can do it, but I said, no, this is haram. Allah said, don't do it, I'll be rewarded. Because I am leaving something for the sake of Allah. So here you go. So what is it, Ya Allah? And he said, طيب. number one, لا تشركوا به شيئا. Don't associate anything with Allah. You all know that. طيب. And uh -huh, the youth are not very young here. Be good to your parents. Be good to your parents. He actually, this is the only thing in the Quran that he made it equal to his worship. Wow. So now, number one is don't worship anything with Allah. Good to your parents. Third, kill, but he divided here. Number one, don't kill your children because you are worried that they, you don't have enough money. And this is what I do not take a life which Allah had made sacred. This is the word I need you all to memorize. You know what's sacred? And Masjid al-Haram, like Mecca, like what else is the sanctity? Something is sanct like sanctuary is something that is holy. So the life in Islam is Allah said it. Allati haram Allahu illa bil There is reasons why Islam allowed killing, but in general, it is sacred. So that's the first question. The first answer, when someone comes to you and tells you, what does Islam say about abortion? Don't cut, jump and say it's haram, because you didn't answer right. Or say, oh, it's allowed. You didn't answer right. We are not this, and we are not this. We are, alhamdulillah, now they can see it. We are in the middle. We are in the middle. So number one, life is very sacred, meaning I take the, the matter very seriously. You should see me when a woman comes to me and says, I want to, and I don't want this pregnancy. You just say, say go, it's haram, don't do it. Blah. Oh, it's okay, no problem, let's do it. No. You have to really sit down and counsel and find out and what is the issues and why and how far we'll come to it. So this is number one. Now, the other, which is, this is the most, probably the famous, the most famous about killing women, or especially girls, with no reason. And Allah said this in Surah Al-Takweer, وَإِذَا الْمَوْعُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ When the young girl who was buried in the dust was asked why, did, why I was killed. You know who killed his daughter before Islam? Sayyidina Umar. And up till he became a Khalifa and Umar, they used to see him crying when he read this. You know why? It's so... Ah, oh, it's so touchy. He said, I still remember when I was covering her with dust, she was cleaning my beard. What, what cruelty. SubhanAllah, and see what Islam did to them. How Islam changed them. I can't imagine this. They did it. It's usual. SubhanAllah. And this is why Allah revealed this. Why are you doing this? Why are you killing a girl? Just because she's a girl? What did she do? Subhanallah. Here, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa this is in Bukhari and Muslim, and he said, أول ما يقضى بين الناس يوم القيامة في الدماء First thing that Allah is going to bring us, two people together, two nations, whatever, is what the matters where people were killed were killed. So you know, killing a human being, unfortunately, again, we are living in a time, in a country, where shooting is normal. Killing is normal. It becomes norm. 
right? Even, even the non-Muslims are saying that we became so numb, oh, it's another shooting. And people are dying, dead, children. I mean, 10 years old. You all heard about it last week. So here you go, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said that Rasulullah Wasallam, the first issue to be judged among people on the day of resurrection are those of unlawful, pay attention to the word, unlawful bloodshed. So when somebody asks you, what does Islam say about, the first thing you have to mention is that it is, life is sanctuary, it's sacred, and we really look into life not as anything else, however, and we're gonna come to the however. Here you go, similar to the current debate in the United States regarding the onset of pregnancy, jurists, scholars have differed about when is abortion and if abortion is allowed. These are the two questions you have to learn. Is it allowed? If the answer is yes, categorically. If the answer is no, when is it then? This is what you need. That's why I took you through the creation. Cool. So let's, let's go and see this Bismillah. This is the, it's a very busy slide, but this is the hadith about the creation of the human beings. And Rasulullah in this hadith gave time frame. He gave time frame. I put it for you in red because this is what I need you to focus on. And this is where scholars differ because he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, the creation of you, us, human, is gathered in the form of semen, meaning nutfa, man and woman, the picture I showed you less than one millimeter, in the womb of your mother for 40 days. These are the words. Like 40 days, six weeks, just less than, a little bit less than six weeks. Then it became a clinging thing, the alaqa, the, person, the picture I showed you, right? In a similar period. He didn't say another 40 days. He said in, in a similar period, okay? Then it became a lump of flesh, mudra, the one I showed you, like a chewing gum, like that, same. Is it 40 days, another 40 days? Or it's all in 40 days? Then Allah, now the question comes in, what you all need to learn. Because now the angel come in, breath the life into it. Once the life breath into it, now we are coming to the no to the forbidden. That's for sure. So here you go. Then Allah sent an angel who breathed the life into it, and the angel is commanded to record four things about it, your provision, provision are you shaqi wa sa'id, are you gonna be happy, are you gonna be miserable? But this, the part I want you to focus on is this. So the scholars differ. And now you know why there is different opinions. Because is this 40 days, it's only one 40 days? And everything is in 40 days, meaning at the end of 40 days, the angel is going to come, meaning by six weeks, is it going to come? After six weeks, I can't do it? Or it's 120 days? Because he said the three times. Are you all with me or I lost you? Clear? Noor clear? So either 120, I love Noor, so I'm going to really pick on her. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. So we have 120 or only 40. Why? You'll come to this. Does anybody know why? Right? That's fine. Okay. Now, again, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said this, and he is talking now about miscarriage. These hadiths are 1400 and something years. And he's, he says, إِذَا وَقَعَتَ الْمُطْفَةَ فِي الرَّحَمْ When the um, zygote or the sperm and the eggs comes into the uterus, about to become the clinge, then uh, the angel will ask Allah, Ya Rabbi, mukhallaqa or ghayr mukhallaqa? Is it going to live or it's not going to live? See, when you have your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you know the miscarriage is from Allah as the baby is from Allah. Because he asked him, he said, he's going to, mukhallaqa is going to change and then there are going to be uh, uh, organs and it's going to be bones and it's going to be muscles and then it's going to be a human being. And he says, فَإِنْ قَالَ غَيْرُ مُخَلَّقَ مَجَّتْهَا الْأَرْحَامُ دَمَا If he said, it's not going to be created, changing, miscarriage. Subhanallah. Otherwise, it's going to continue. So this is two options. The miscarriage is from Allah. The baby is from Allah. The infertility is from Allah. It's all from him. 
is not from a human being. Don't blame anybody. It's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So abortion allowed. I put backward. If the pregnancy is more than 120 days, meaning 16 weeks, the answer is absolutely no, with one exception. Actually, it's two exceptions. One is mother's life. Because now you have two lives. You have the baby life and the mother life. Which one comes first? Mother, always, always. The mother's life comes first. If I can save them both, absolutely. Absolutely. I did a cesarean section on a dead woman. Dead. Opened her on the table, not in the OR. And literally with nothing, just put a knife, got the baby out. Because now the mom life is gone. I need to save the baby. So when you put the two lives, mother comes first. So everyone agree, that's why I put for you consensus. This is how you answer. Because the next question, what about rape? Same thing. If there is rape, it's way more lenient, especially because it's not her, but it's not her fault. So more than 120, I really have to. When you will save the life, and we have done it, absolutely. Usually don't take the decision yourself. At least three Muslim physicians. There's one, case, one yeah, there's a couple of medical problems when the woman has heart failure. It's called cardiomyopathy. She'll die. If she continues with the pregnancy, she'll die. The mortality is 60 to 70%. So that's when you terminate. And you allow it. And we do it. But again, not, you just not do it right away. You have to go through the process, make sure. So this is one. Now, less than 40 days, I'm taking you through the two. So six weeks. Remember, there is no angel yet. So, okay. You all have never heard this before, right? How many of you have heard this before? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing it. <laughs> Fine. Okay, so less than 40 days, meaning less than six weeks. The scholars are very lenient in here, right? Except in Imam Malik, he does not allow it, period. Absolutely. And this is not, look what I said, some. It's not like everyone allowed it. But the reason to allow it is very lenient. Yani it's not like mother's life. Any emotional, any difficulty, even minor, that's going to happen to the woman, then you can do it. Still, some people don't do it. But this is available. So less than 40, less than 40, you need a reason, but not a major reason. More than 120, you need a reason, a major reason. Okay? Now you come in between. That's the usual problem. Which means, because by the time she finds out she's pregnant, she's at least six weeks. I mean, sometimes you get it at five, but most of the time it's six plus. That's when you really have to counsel. Counsel, hours, hours. Because the answer is not no categorically, and the answer is not yes categorically. The answer is very valid reason, including mother life or her well-being. Well-being, and again, if you are in my shoes, what I have seen, sometimes pregnancy can be very detrimental, especially on the mental health. If she has a history of mental health, I can't tell you. I saw one last week in the hospital here. Absolute psychosis. We delivered her right away. Alhamdulillah, she was at the end. So we right away, we did a C-section at 1 a.m. Because she was out of it, out of it. You know what psychosis? When you are not in this world, you know what you are saying. Subhanallah. And you, you look and you say, Rabbi, lak alhamd, you gave it to me. The ni'mah of, of al-aqal. Subhanallah, but she has no control. Absolutely. So here you go. There is reasons. Mental illness is one of them. And medical illness is one of them. Of course, congenital anomalies. If the baby is abnormal and the abnormality is not life sustainable, meaning it's, the baby will die, then you're fine. You can also do that. If he is, can be, can live, like I had a friend of mine, she and her husband, mashallah, tabarakallah, but she has three abnormal children. And this is the fourth. 
it's it's not easy. I mean, unless you go through this difficulty. So you really, when you talk to people, you really have to feel them. You don't give just the dogma and it's haram, don't do it, you're going to go to Jahannam. Or you go and do it. You really have to, case, that's why I told you, case by case, listen and see it. And the best thing for all of you sitting here, since you are neither in the medical field, nor you are, anybody in the medical field here? Physician? Midwife. Okay, so you're close, alhamdulillah. And you are? Both, mashallah. So you, you see this, but you don't see it as much as we see it in our office, because this doesn't come to labor and delivery usually. They will not. But you probably have seen cases where you said, I don't know why she is pregnant. Why did she do this to herself? Now, one thing you all have to know, abortion should never be a method of contraception. Never. It's, you know what? I don't want to use pill. I don't want to use this. And then I get pregnant and I go and take it. You can do that. So again, this is where is the gray zone, as we call it, and every case is by its case. This is, I love this again, it's a beautiful reciter, but this is in Surah Al-Shura, end of Surah Al-Shura. To Allah belongs heavens and earth. He create what he wills, right? And now gives girls and gives to whom he wills boys, and then, or you give you both. I will use a wujuhum the cry or nothing or none. Did you, did you, what is the, the word in this verse that should have caught your eyes? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do it to you again. I'll do it to you again, it's okay. Okay, because I need you, this is also, it's not, not only medical, but it's also about Quran. What, what's catch your eyes in this one? Say that again. Right? Huh? It, you're close, but there's one little bit stronger. It's a hiba for sure, but man al wahib. That's what it is. Why do I, because again, why do I have only boys? Why do I have only girls? Why don't I have children? Hadi, this is a huge problem I'm seeing it these days. Huge. Not having children is not the end of the world. You know what, I, I have women really get so depressed and sad. And I say, are you better than Sayyida Aisha? Right? The youngest wife, the most beautiful wife, the one he really loved, the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And Allah didn't give her children. Did that make her less? I'm not saying children are not beautiful. They are beautiful, subhanAllah. Al-ma'lu wal banunziyatu hayat al-dunya. Wealth and children is the beauty of this life. But when he decides, that's why I told you, what is the word in this ayah? And whom he wills decide they will not have children. What should be my response? Alhamdulillah. What about if I'm so sad? I've seen it. I've seen it. I get emails. I was like, Ya Allah, make it easier for this woman. What do you say? Ask him to make you feel better and accept his decree. Because you have not no you cannot change it. Can't change it. Khalas. And I saw 19 years old. This is the youngest I have seen. Absolutely, she cannot have children. Less than one year married. Beauty queen, and mashallah, tabarakallah, practicing woman. And she came with her husband. I married, we were married a year ago, and no children. And we tested her, no way. And this is how I say, I never say no way. I say, listen, medicine say no way. But Allah is capable. But if you're asking my opinion, I said, go and start thinking of adoption. It's hard. But if I, that's why I keep reminding you, live through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that's how I can pass through these difficulties. He decided why, which we all ask, what is the answer? Someone tells you, why me? We hear this all the time. Why me? What do you say? Have you had this question? Right? What do you say? 
It's very hard, by the way. We really need to be compassionate in here. But how do you be compassionate at the same time you are realistic? What do you say? Huh? Which is true. So the, the always good is what Allah chooses. That's true. What else? Hmm? Exactly. I was like, this is what I tell women, especially women, because motherhood is something, right? And I say, listen, do you believe Allah is just? Do we believe Allah is just? Show me hands, right? We have no doubt. Al Adl, that's who He is. There is justice in there. I don't see it. You don't see it. But I, I come from this. Maybe He wants to use you somewhere else. That if you had children, you will not be able to do it. And I always bring Sayyida Aisha example because she was the only one who is faqiha, who is the scholar from among all the wives of Rasul. Why is that? Why is that? And Allah did not give her children. Sayyida Khadija, much older, you all know the seerah, much older, 40 something, and she delivered all his babies. Isn't that subhanak? Subhanallah. But he didn't make her faqiha, but made Sayyida Aisha. So this is what I want you all. This is why I'm repeating this. Yahabu. Yahabu, it's him. It is him who decides what he wants to do. So now, infertility, huge issue. It's becoming more and more and more and more of an issue. Not like before. One of the reasons is because women are getting married later. And as we get older, the fertility gets less. That's how Allah created us. So what is IVF? I get this very common question. Is it halal? Bismillah. Let's see al-fuqaha fi hadihi al-ghurfa. Let's see <laughs> the scholars in this room. Huh? It's either yes, no, or I don't know. I'm sorry? So now she's becoming very wise <laughs> and answering the, the politically correct answer in certain cases. There is a better answer for the idea. I'm sorry. Right. So usually, I'm going to put it for you. So usually, the answer is in general, it is allowed. It's not like a miscarriage. In general, it is halal. And what does halal mean? Don't tell me it's allowed. I know that. Or permissible, I know that. What does halal mean? Opposite haram. If I do it, I'm rewarded. And if I don't do it, I am punished, right? Or actually, if you say halal, yeah, it's usually it's the wajib, that's how you do it. So this is IBF. What is IBF? Okay, thank you. <laughs> so here you go. Process of fertilization. Remember the first slides? When we said we need the, the sperm and he gets in and all these millions out, one sperm gets in. Remember the slide? I hope you do. Yes? So it's the same idea. The same idea. They have the egg, but the egg, they take it out from the woman's body. Normally, it's inside. Right? There is a marital relationship. The sperm gets in and then they swim up, 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 up. They meet the egg. They meet and then fertilization. Well, that doesn't happen inside, so they said, let's do it outside, and that's what they did. And it's usually in a glass or in a tube. That's why they, originally they used to call it test the tube baby, right? And the process involves a lot of, it's, it's a cumbersome process, and it's very expensive. Does anybody know how much it costs? Between 10, 15, 20. It's a lot of money and cash, and it's not covered by insurance companies. So it's a lot of money. That's one of the anxieties. And that's one of the things you have to feel with the, with the couple who don't, cannot have children because it's also very expensive. Okay. Removing an egg or eggs, usually more than one, from the ovary and sperm fertilize them, cultural media, in the lab. After the fertilized egg is called zygote, embryo culture for two to six days. They put the, keep it outside. For two to six days, they put it back. And then you hopefully you will get into a successful pregnancy. That's basically what it is. That's in a simple way looking at it. You have this is the egg, 
This is usually done sometimes in the office, sometimes in the operating room. They put a long needle under ultrasound. You look at the, usually have given already medication, stimulate the eggs, they get big, 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 and you usually uh, aspirate, they call the egg aspiration, the bigger ones, and then you put them in the tube, the, the, the husband gives the sperm, they usually treat it to make the more fertile, they combine them, by Allah will, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed, then she gets pregnant. That's idea. Who is this? The first IVF baby, Louise Brown, 78, the first one. St this is the two. They started the process in 1968, 77 she was born. So they look at patient, look at patient to get success. Doesn't come in a day or a night. From 68, they start trying. And six, 1977, where well, she was delivered. This is actually in Britain. Mary Louise, um, I actually looked at it and I found her picture. She's married, she has children now, but she has her own children, subhanAllah. In July 25, 1987, Louise Joy Brown, I was right, she was delivered in 1987, alhamdulillah, is born at Oldham and District General Hospital in Manchester, in England. To parents, Leslie and Peter Brown, the healthy baby was delivered by shortly after midnight by C-section and she weighs five pounds, 12 ounces. This changed the world. There's few things in medicine that change the world. This is one of them. This gave hope to millions, made million motherless women by the grace of Allah, mothers. And uh, fathers with no children, because not only the woman, sometimes it's male factor we call, it's the father has the issue. And made fathers who cannot have children, subhanAllah, able to do that. Is it allowed? I guess, I guess can't do that. <laughs> I guess doesn't work. <laughs> it's not like it, do you like it, I guess. Okay, here you go. Okay. All, I put it in bold and I underlined it so you all can, all assisted reproductive technology are permitted in Islam. If, and the if is the big one. If the semen and the egg and the incubator are all legally married. And pay attention to this, during the span of their marriage. Why is this? Who can figure it out? Let's read it one more time. All assisted reproductive technologies are permitted in Islam. If the semen, meaning coming from the, the man, the egg or the ovum, source, and the incubator, where is going to go back? Come from the legally married husband and wife during the span of their marriage. This is the right answer. I need sperm from the husband, egg from the mother. The uterus is the mother. They are still married. So why? Because these days, what's happening is, which we're going to come to it later, but so you all can follow me. These days, because it's costly and there's hormones and everything, so they don't get one egg or one zygote. They get at least four or five. And they freeze. They use one or two, maximum two, especially in this country. And they freeze the rest. Sometimes you get 10 of them. So you freeze the rest. The rest are embryos, human beings, husband and wife, genes. So if they get divorced, the woman cannot go and take it back because he's not her husband anymore. See how detailed is this? How detailed is this? Because if she delivers a boy, that boy is not her mahram anymore. Because she divorced the husband. So this is why it's at the span of their marriage. According to Islam, a man's or a woman's infertility should be accepted if it is beyond the cure. I'll come to it later. I'll explain what I said. Okay, but let's finish and then we'll talk. Assisted reproduction was widely accepted after prestigious scientific religious bodies they met in the 80s. This is not new because Louise Brown was born in 1978. In the 80s, they start meeting and says, okay, what are we gonna do? Everybody is asking. Issued guidelines which were accepted by indifferent Muslim countries and I'll show it to you. 
This is here. The guidelines include fatwa from Darul Ifta in Cairo, 1980, fatwa from the Islamic Fiqh, Fiqh Council in Mecca, 1984, the Islamic Organization of Medical Sciences in Kuwait, 1983, the fatwa of International Islamic Fiqh Academy in 1986, and the International Islamic Center for Population Study and Research in Al Azhar University. This is widely accepted. There's nobody is going to come and tell you IVF is haram if it met this. So I can say yes categorically. I can say no categorically. Well, what do you mean? Where is the egg coming from? Where is the sperm coming from? Who's carrying the baby? Oh, yeah. Are they still married? Then you're fine. I can't go and, and say it's haram or it is allowed. Okay? Who knows what is this? Other than people who are physicians. Yes. Yeah. Surrogacy. There was a picture, but I just found it a little bit. They put a woman pregnant and under it is said the rent. Yeah, and I found it very weird. Rent. Because basically that's what they do. They rent the uterus. But I found it a little bit. Yeah, but it is not. I, I, I just found it not something I want to, to read. Let's put it this way. Because this is usually is paid. This is paid. Right? Who's going to carry my baby? And also, especially if you, know, you want surrogacy, you want the woman to be young and healthy, so she will make sure, and then you pay her. So what does Islam say about that? I need to hear one word. There's no other word. It is not allowed. Absolutely. Period. No excuse. No excuse. Why is that? Because this is what is it's an arrangement. Woman, the surrogate, agrees to carry and give birth to a child on behalf of another person or couple. Now we are seeing this more and more, unfortunately. That's why they put person or a couple, the intended parents. So she is not, she has no rights. I found it so hard. Subhanallah. But why? What is wrong with it? As we everything in these days, like why not? Right? Everything these days, like why not? What is the big deal? Huh? No. Nope. No. Nope. It's nothing to do with the damage or emotional. Yeah, but that, that, of course, well, that's what he's saying. The uterus is not the mom. Why it is not allowed? One person. One, yes. I can't hear you, Habibati. Exactly. Because of the genes. That's what it is. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Mujadala. Right? الَّذِينَ يُظَاهِرُونَ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ نِسَائِهِمْ مَا هُنَّ أُمَّهَاتِهِمْ إِنْ أُمَّهَاتُهُمْ إِلَّا اللَّائِي وَلَدْنَهُمْ their mothers are the one who delivered them, but not surrogate. Their mothers. Their mothers. Because of the mix of genes. Islam, you need to know this and you have to say this and again, nice way, but that's how it is. It's extremely important. Who is the father? Who is the mother? It's not like these days. You don't know who is what. And اختلاطل انساب, when the genes gets mixed up, then at one point, the, mother, the brother will marry the sister. Or the mother will marry the son. Subhanallah. Because you don't know. And this is why I'm going to come to something else very soon. Also another question comes in. But this is what it is. It is not allowed at all in Islam. Categorically, no exception. Ma fiha at all in this. If any man, if any man among you divorce their wives by dhihar, meaning he tells the wife, you are like my mother. You're not going to be my wife anymore. But he doesn't divorce her. This is the woman who came and complained to Rasulullah And you tell me there is no woman's rights in Islam. You know the story? Everybody? Alhamdulillah. Right? So they calling them mothers, they cannot be their mothers. Their mothers are the mothers who carry them, not surrogate, where the eggs is hers. So you cannot do that. What about this? You know what this? What is this? Anybody. Not, the, not people in medical field. I can't hear you. Somebody just saying it. Freezing. Cryopreservation. 
freezing to maintain or to hold. Freezing what? That's the question. Don't jump to question right away. Wait. Wait, wait. Freezing, storage, gamete, zygote, pre-embryo. And these days add to it sperm and eggs. You can freeze the egg, you can freeze the sperm, you can freeze the zygote or the pre-embryo. Patients who have been diagnosed, this is very common and this is absolutely an option. Patients who have been diagnosed as having a disease where treatment from the disease may result in infertility. Where is that? I mean, you give them chemotherapy or radiation. Done. The ovaries will die and the testes will die. So there will be no more fertility. So before you start the treatment, can you take the eggs and can you take some of the sperms or some of the eggs? Different people, I mean, a woman, even if she is not married, that's a question, I get it all the time. The woman is not married, but now she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, and now they're going to go ahead and do, we will do surgery and remove the ovaries and everything, or take the eggs, and you can preserve. Or if the men, testicular carcinoma, and you have radiation, you do this. Cryopreservation or freezing techniques are able to store pre-embryo up to a few years, which can be thawed and returned to the uterus uh -huh, of the same woman. Same question, same principle. You bring it back. What is happening these days? It's called egg donation and sperm donation. That's not allowed whatsoever. Because of the same principle. Because once you take the egg or the sperm from none of the parents, then the genes are mixed. So if this woman who donated, think of it this way. This woman donated her egg. Right at age 20. And they, there's a lot of money for that. 20 and 30,000. There's a profile, you fill it. I can't tell you. I mean, this is our job. And I see. And then the woman donated her egg. And that couple got pregnant. The woman got pregnant and they delivered the baby. And that baby is a boy. This 20 years old finished college. It's usually young college girls. They do it because it's, it's a lot of money. Then this young girl got married and had a baby and had a girl. This girl is the sister of that boy. If they met in college and got together, this is man and a woman, they're brothers and sisters. Did you get it? That's the whole idea. That, that's why it is not allowed at all. And egg freezing, known as oocyte cryopreservation, harvesting a woman's eggs and freezing them so she can attempt pregnancy. The other reason we are seeing this is when woman is not getting 37, 38, and 39, and she's worried, she's not getting married, should I go and do egg freeze? And maybe later on, if I see, if I meet a man, uh, I can, um, my chances of, you know, in early 40s, my chances of getting pregnant is higher. It's also tricky. It's, it's allowed if she's going to be married to this man. You can do that. So at later date, through an IVF, having the option to freeze eggs can be valuable, life-changing for one, some of the woman. So, yes, it's allowed, cryopreservation allowed, but scholars have cautioned that the frozen embryo are the exclusive, same story, property of couples who produce the gamete. Think of the genes, that's extremely important, and may be transferred only to the same wife in successive uh, cycle, restrictively during the duration of the marriage contract. So go back to the same wife, to the same woman, and during the marriage uh, contract. What do we want in life? I love this picture. Not only because she's so beautiful. SubhanAllah, but read under here. It is easier to, to build strong children than to repair bro broken adults. And this is what we are living this day and age. يعني سبحان الله تبارك الله رب العالمين what a beauty هذه I, I have a habit of whenever I see a beautiful picture I just save it and I was like one day I'm going to do presentation I'll use it and subhanallah this morning I just found that like this is it so when you and I'm not talking about infertility when you take care of your children don't break them when they are young because it's very hard when they get older it's very hard and then the last but not the least 
I love this verse. O oh, you who believe, obey Allah and His Rasul, and those who have authority over you. And if you differ, go back to the, I say go back to the source. Turn it back. Look into what did Allah says in Allah and Rasul if you are real believers in Allah on the Day of Judgment. Don't follow what everyone is saying just because that's how it is done in this country or that country or this age or day. What did he say? He said, okay, alhamdulillah. He said, no, you cannot do it. Ya Allah, it's very difficult. Make it easy for me. But don't just do it because everyone else is do it. Ya Rabbi, I mean, Jazakumullahu khayran, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha ila ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik, sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi tasliman kathira. Any question? Yes. Well, I'll leave yours to the end. Uh, can you do me a favor and turn uh, turn the uh, the camera because the people online can't see me now? Yes. Tafadl. Can everyone say their name so I know them? Khulu, tafadl ya khulu. I'm sorry? For years you can do it, but it's... I don't know. I think you can... Four or five, I had a patient more than five. But usually, if you are if you are freezing the embryo, in general, the longer they are frozen, the effectiveness gets less, but still they use it. Yes. Yes. And your name, I'm sorry? Farid. Yeah, and these days don't even talk about these days. These days, wallah, ladhi la illahu. I, wallah, yeah, you're laughing, but it's true. It's true. You know what I say? I say, if my mom, and yeah, she died when I was very young, if she, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, decide to bring her back, I don't think she wants to live anymore. I think she will say, let's leave. Because this is, I yeah, mean, we are, things is changing so quickly and rapidly that, and it's so hard to know. And I always say, may Allah, may Allah help all the young generation. It's so confusing. So, a lot of, you don't know who's right, who's wrong. Everyone say, I'm right. Anyone can go on the internet, on TikTok, and say whatever they want to say, and people will follow them. SubhanAllah. So it, it, it's very hard. SubhanAllah. Yes. Amina. I'm sorry if you do what? Yes. So if you do IVF and go through the process, what usually you do is you throw it away. That's a very good question. No, because you cannot, you're worried. You can't give it to anybody. So you did IVF, alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen, did three cycles and the three times uh, were, were successful. You got it or you got it twins, alhamdulillah. And then I still have more frozen and that's very common, right? Um, we cannot donate it. We cannot give it to anybody. This usually, you have to get rid of it. So usually, you know, if you, whatever they give you, bury it, just because it's a, a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But people does it. People donate it. I, I have a friend, non-Muslim. That's exactly how she got pregnant. Her friend gave her the zaygah. Yeah, subhanAllah, it's there. It, this, you see this all, the, it's reality. So I have a job offer that implies working on a project this is a question from the internet. I'm sorry, I, what if I freeze embryos and then decided to, to toss them because they were not good embryo and do not want to have more children? That's one, I just answered it. So let's see this. I have a job offer. Why it's not showing? Okay, alhamdulillah. I have a job offer that implies working on a project promoting the use of modern family planning in developing non-Muslim countries, including definitive contraception. Is it permissible to accept? Um, Modern family planning is birth control tablets, IUDs, uh, the male and female um, condoms, and then including tubal ligation or vasectomy. In Islam, all the four, first four, and of course, uh, al-azil, or they call it coitus interruptus, or outside ejaculation, these are all allowed. The permanent procedures are not allowed in Islam unless you're saving the life of the woman. So I cannot do, I personally don't do it, don't do tubal ligation, and you don't do um, um, for the men, we don't do it, but the other physicians do them. The urologist is vasectomy. So if the job offer is, then you can ask them. I, I will do everything, but I am not going to be involved in tubal ligation. And if they allow you, they allow you. And from my 
my work, I have seen people are open to this. Yani they respect your religious uh, uh, requirements or boundaries, if I want to say. Can you please, let's see here, okay, I will give one more. So to give, if a, if a surrogacy uh, has already been done, this is from South Africa because I know the lady. The parents had the child, the mother, pay attention, this is so confusing. So you have a surrogacy done, they have a child. The mother, her brother's wife, carried the baby. How do you handle the situation? So you have two brothers, okay, this is how you analyze it. So you have two brothers, wife and a wife. The wife carried the pregnancy of this couple. Allowed or not? Absolutely not. It's like the brother married her. Can a, can a brother marry his uh, sister-in-law? Especially they are still married? SubhanAllah. The baby is already born. La hawla la quwwata illa billah. I have no idea. This needs absolutely, but يعني, this is all for all of us. Before you do things, please ask. Now you have a child. SubhanAllah. What if you are not married? And this is a very common question. I get this almost, I would say, very, very frequent. We have, alhamdulillah, nine more minutes. No, we have 14 more minutes, alhamdulillah. What if you are not married and want to freeze your eggs till you get married? Is it allowed? The answer is yes, absolutely. You have no problem with that. Okay. Let's see this one, so just to give them their rights also. What if you are, okay, I did that. Let's say this. Can, can, can an engaged couple, engaged couple, freeze embryos if their intention is to get married in the near future, or does the couple need to get married first before they freeze the embryo? Very, number one, there is no embryo. Because you cannot get the embryo. What is embryo? An egg and a sperm. You can't do that unless they are married. Or they are engaged. So I'm assuming she said freeze the egg and freeze the, the sperm. That's a tricky question. If they are talking about embryo, the answer is no. Because they are not married. That's zina. That's relationship outside marriage. If they are talking that the couple, she will uh, freeze her eggs and he will freeze his uh, uh, sperm, yes or no? Absolutely. Because they can use it later on as they wish. Okay? Like, my question is completely the opposite. Can I remove, ay, 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 can I remove my ovaries because to prevent recurrence of breast cancer or ovarian cancer? It's a very common question. It's one of the treatments, especially if you, may Allah protect you all. If the woman gets um, breast cancer young, or she has a very high risk, uh, BRCA1, the antigens, and she, has, she has a very high risk of uh, cancers, one of the options is to remove the ovaries. If the benefit outweigh the risk, and this is something nobody can say, except you have to go and talk. And I always say go to talk to Muslim physicians because they can give you the two. There's not one. And it depends what's your risk. Is it very high risk? How old are you? Because this, once you remove the ovaries, that's it. No more. No more children at all. So can she, what I will recommend, if she is a very high risk, what do you do? Yeah, freeze your eggs and then remove the ovaries because the ovaries are not about the eggs. The ovaries are about the hormones. So freeze the eggs. Now that's one of the scenarios. Let's assume she's 22, 23. SubhanAllah. Remove the eggs, freeze it, and then take, away, take your ovaries if that's what they say. And then the rest will be um, IVF and then just like what I usually done with IVF. Tayyip. Um, let's see this one. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. She's an OBGYN trainee, wants to specialize in reproductive medicine and fertility. 
Am I Islamically allowed to do IVF as a doctor on a non-Muslim couple who are not married? That's very tricky. That's very tricky. Don't say no right away. Don't say no right away. You really need to read the question. See what she said. She said she's a training in OBGYN. She wants to do IVF, reproductive endocrinology. Am I Islamically allowed to do IVF as a doctor on a non-Muslim patient? Now you have to look at this. It's not for a Muslim, absolutely no. This is a non-Muslim patient who are not married. This is what we face every single day in my in my career. What category this falls in? This is how you look at questions. So when I or she is helping a non-married couple to get pregnant, what can non-Muslims? The laws of Islam doesn't apply on them. What category this falls into? Least. Uh, I have to explain this because the question, you don't know what I'm saying. So in Islam, there's five, or let's say three, the three categories in the hadith. Al-halal ubayin, permissible things are permissible, very clear. Wa haram, the forbidden is very clear. In between, there is doubt for my, he didn't say gray. Megan, he said mutashabihat, mushtabiyah. He said, I, I tease Megan because I know her. So it's mutashabihat, it's doubtful. Meaning, they don't fall into for sure they are allowed. And they don't fall for sure they are not allowed. They are doubtful. I don't know what did he tell me to do. Huh? The hadith, that's okay, I'll teach you. That's why I'm here. فَمَنِ اتَّقَ الشُّبُهَاتِ Whomsoever, stay away from the doubtful. You have saved your deen, your religion, and you have saved your honor. So my advice to this woman, and again, it's not, I'm not going to say haram, because I don't have a proof to say this is non-Muslims. I can't say non-Muslims can drink alcohol. I can't. But I can say to the Muslims for sure. So I will say, if this is me, and I don't say what you do, say this is me, I will stay away from it. Because it's in the doubtful. But what a beautiful, what does this question tell you? What does this woman, this young woman, she's a resident, what does this woman has? Taqwa. That's how taqwa is. Because she loves it. It's beautiful. It's very nice. It's easy actually for women because it's an easier life than other branches of OBGYN. SubhanAllah, may Allah make it easy for you, Ya Zahra. Tayyip. I have. Uh, I can do this online. I'll answer this privately. Uh, let's see. Okay. Any any question? Yalla, uh, Megan. My question, uh, I answered this. Go ahead, yeah, Megan. Uh, the first one was, why is it that I think it's easy to understand why you can't put an embryo in a couple that's not married anymore? I think it's not understandable. When you said the child would be creating mahram, I was curious, why is that? La, I'm thinking, they said they have to be married. They have to be married. Why? Because who is the father of the baby? Legally, Islamically. No, the mahra, I think I made a mistake. I think, but I have to check it. But I have to make But I'm talking about why didn't they? Why? No, we don't say that doesn't make sense. I have to look it up. There is a reason I read it, but it's not coming to me. But why is not allowed, although they were married? Because they are not married anymore. Who's the father of this baby? Who's going to take care of this baby? Yeah, type. Second, second question. Okay, why? I was curious, what was the reason uh, if you know Imam Malik was unique in saying no, even at Because he said, and this is actually not only him, there's contemporary scholars who tells you, even because if you leave this after 40 days, it will become a human being. So he didn't allow it. And some of the, you have to know this, some of the rulings that come from the Imams is they call it that you close the possibility of worse scenarios. But again, he was the only one. The three allowed it, but not all of them allowed some of it. The third one was morning after pill. Where is that following the category? The morning after pill for us is okay because they are not yet, and it's not IUD, to prevent the uh, meeting of the eggs and the. Uh, did you know what the morning after pill? Okay, alhamdulillah, I don't have to explain. Thank you. Huh? Okay, uh, so this is a question. We have six more. Alhamdulillah. Can you please, because we didn't, uh, 
you didn't hear the Quran. Can you please give Islamic cure of PCOD, PCOS, Islamic cure? It's a very common problem these days, please help. It's a very common problem, right? Since she said Islamic cure, what is the first answer? A dua, absolutely. Absolutely. A dua, a ruqya, Quran, because you said Islamic, right? And then every case by its case, I have to know the case. I can't give answers on the phone, medicine, online. But in general, it's, it, there is a lot of options of treatment. It needs a lot of patience. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never, I always tell my patients, Allah will never let you down. I mean, just, just be patient. Be, be patient. Don't say, I have to. I have to. What if the freezing? Oh, we have answered this. Alhamdulillah. We answered that. If, let's see. I, I can't. I, I'm not going to give uh, medical fatwas online. It's, it's, it's. Okay, we have done that. Don't ask people, uh, can I take this medication or not? Yeah, even physicians, we, we don't know you. Uh, okay, we answered that. I think I answered all the questions. Yeah, Nurita, if there's any question, put it on, on the screen. Okay, طيب. any other question from the... Oh, we still have here. Bismillah. Like the fill in the IUD. I can't hear you. The fill in the IUD is allowed. Is the implant allowed? Yeah, because the implant is the same thing. Implant is the one under the skin. It's the same as the hormonal IUD, same as the mini pill. Any, how do you know... In general, if something is allowed. What does number one, what does it have? It has hormones. Is it harming to the woman? No, then you're allowed. If these are harmful to the woman, it's not allowed. That number. Number two, what it does it do? So what does it do to prevent ovulation or prevent the meeting of the sperm and the egg? Then it's allowed. Yes, I'll come to you. So there is a couple, they froze their embryos. Subhanallah. Same, same what we said. Yeah, so she cannot, the husband died, right? And the baby died, subhanallah. May Allah make it easy for her. But she cannot go back and take her eggs. I mean the zygote. Eggs, yes, but not the zygote. Or the embryo. The second question is regarding surrogacy. Um, not in this country, but in countries where there's monogamy, there's polygamy, and Cannot. The second wife cannot. Because that's usually another question. And you, it was actually in the fatwa also. So if the man is married to two wives, two wives, right? The remember the genes comes half from the mother, half from the father. So if she they got together the eggs and the sperm from this, and then surrogacy is the other wife. Why it is not allowed? You have to think of it because it's genes. Then the, in the, when scholars tells you this, it's not about now. It's usually related to their children. So the, the, the brother, the brother of the other wife, the brother of the other wife, what is the relationship of that brother to the girl who's going to be delivered? So a man is married to two wives. It's really complicated, but I'm glad you asked. Because this is how you start to think. So a man married to two wives. It happens outside this country, right? So they got pregnant. They got the eggs and the sperm and put it in this woman's, the second wife. The brother of this wife, what is the relationship to the baby girl that's going to be delivered? Her uncle. Her mahram, right? So now you made, what you made, you made things. So his son, his son can, can or her, his daughter, and to this, to the, to this, it's very complicated. I, even me, I have to think, and usually I write these down, but it's very complicated. And usually, it ends be, uh, 
the Anisab is, is gets, we have only one minute left. Yes. Because I promised them by 45, we will be leaving. I'm sorry, couple is married. And the wife gets pregnant. The husband forced her to abortion. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, if she really had no choice, Yani, it could kill Mahsu. So she would be like the um, the the one the woman who had been raped, right? But can I mean this is very difficult and it's individual cases, right? But she you have to talk, it really had no other choice, no support. Someone, someone talks to him, someone talk to her, leave him, go to I and mean, she really doesn't want it. Leave him, go and stay with your any with your parents, but again. Could be the only woman, nothing else. I mean, there is a lot of sad scenarios there. So it's per case, but it's very, very sad. Jazakumullahu khairan, 1245. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Sallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabi taslima kathira. Barakallahu fikum. May Allah reward you all. Jazakumullahu khairan.